Hey guys, my name is Jordan, and today we're going to find out why a GE washer isn't filling with water. There are a few different parts we can check to fix this problem. The water valve, pressure switch, and control board are the most common parts that may need to be replaced. Let's walk you through each step together so you can diagnose and repair your washer. Before we get started, take a second to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can see more guided repairs. We appreciate your support. With over 2 million products in stock and the know-how to help you do it yourself, we are AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we need a multimeter and a quarter inch nut driver. While you're getting those together, please remember to keep safety first. Unless we're testing live voltage, always unplug your washer or switch off the circuit breaker before you do any testing or repairs. And while you're at it, turn off the water supply as well. The first thing we're going to check out is the water valve. To gain access to it, we need to use a nut driver to remove the four quarter inch screws on the back of the panel, which are here at the top. Then we need to roll the top panel forward to disengage it from the tabs. Since we'll be checking live voltage during this test, you'll need to plug your washer back in and turn it on. Be very careful here to protect yourself from electric shock, which could potentially cause serious injuries. Please don't ever test live voltage if you're uncomfortable using a multimeter. To see if the water valve is good, we need to check for proper voltage. First, you need to set your multimeter to test for AC voltage. It'll have a symbol that looks like a V with a squiggly line. Then you'll check the wires going to the cold water solenoid, and then the wires going to the hot water solenoid. You'll need to set the temperature to the appropriate setting depending on which solenoid you test. You should get a reading of 120 volts during each test. By the way, this model has an automatic temperature control which can cycle the cold and hot valves on and off depending on what temperature you need. So if your washer is the same, keep in mind that just because it's not getting voltage at the moment doesn't mean it's bad. It could just be cycling it off. If you get good voltage during either test, you'll need to replace the water valve. If there's no voltage, you need to test the board and wiring. Next up is the pressure switch test. For this test, make sure the washer is turned off and unplugged. Since we've already removed the panel, we can see the pressure switch right here. We're going to be testing for continuity here, so you need to set your multimeter to that setting. It's going to look like a sideways Wi-Fi symbol. After you've done that, set the unit to fill. Then put one meter probe on each wire terminal. With no water or water below the selected load size, you should get a continuity reading and your meter should make a beeping sound. With a tub full of water or fill to a setting for the load size you selected, you should get an open reading, which is no continuity, and your meter shouldn't make any sounds. If you didn't get continuity, that means your switch is bad and needs to be replaced. As you can see, there is not continuity, so the switch needs to be replaced. We'll show you how at the end of this video. If you got continuity, then your pressure switch is good and you can move on to test the control board. You'll see the board on the left side of the panel. Since we'll be checking live voltage during this test, you'll need to plug your washer back in and turn it on. Just a reminder to be extra careful here to protect yourself from electric shock. On the board, you need to find the correct terminals and wires to test. First, set your multimeter to volts AC, then find pins J11 and J10. We need to test from terminal 4 on J11, which is a white wire with a red stripe, to terminal 1 on J10, which is a red wire with a black stripe. You should get a reading of 120 volts AC here. If there's no power, that means you have a wiring issue or incoming power issue and need to check the receptacle. If you get power at this point, we need to see if the board is sending power to the water valve. While the washer is in fill mode, select cold temperature and test from terminal 2 on J11, which is a tan wire, to terminal 1 on J10, which is a red wire with a black stripe. You should get a reading of 120 volts AC. While the washer is still in fill mode, select hot temperature and test from terminal 1 on J11, which is a purple wire, to terminal 1 on J10, which is a red wire with a black stripe. You should get a reading of 120 volts AC here. If there's no power coming out, then you have a bad board. If you have power here and you have power at the valve, then you have a bad valve. If you have power at the board and no power at the water valve, then you have bad wiring. Since we determined that the pressure switch is bad, here's how to replace it. To remove the old pressure switch, remove the water level switch knob by gently pulling it outward. Then disconnect the two wires and make note of which wire went to each terminal and the pressure hose. Then press the plastic locking tab, 
rotate the switch counterclockwise and pull the old switch out of the control panel. Install the new switch by lining it up with the hole and rotating it clockwise until it snaps back behind the locking tab. Then reattach the wires and the pressure hose. Make sure to put the wires back on the same terminals you noted earlier. Now we can put the knob back on. It's keyed so it can only go on one way. Next, we need to line up the lower tabs on the panel and roll it back. When you press the panel, it should pop back into place. Then, reinstall the screws. Lastly, turn the water supply back on and plug the washer back in. Once you found the faulty part, grab your model number and head over to appliancepartspros.com to order a replacement. Most orders arrive in just two business days, and we have thousands of videos to show you how to install your new part. You can also share your repair experience with us by leaving a comment below. And if this video helped you, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons to see more videos like this one. Thanks for your support.